There was a Yid I remember. His name was Reb Zalman Bronstein. He was a Russian Jew, a Chassid. He was in the Russian army during the Second World War. He would tell the story of Zalman Bronstein. His comrades, his colleagues were falling like flies. And one day, one day in the middle of the war, Reb Zalman went into the bunker. And in comes a general in the Russian army. He came in to shave. As he's shaving, he's singing to himself a Russian lullaby. And the Zalman, who was a blessed voice and knew the songs, felt he's not doing it right. So even though he was a general, he couldn't deal with the forgery of the nigging. <laughs> so he starts singing. The general hears a voice. And he looks at him, he says, with such a voice, what are you doing here? You have to be the solo in the Red Army's choir. Come with me. Zalman said it saved my life. He plucked me out of the front lines where everybody was being killed. And I became very active, very successful. They loved me, my voice, my talent. He says, one day, one day, they told me that in a little while there's going to be a huge performance. It's going to be the top performance of the Red Army. All the top echelons of the army are going to be present. He says, I look at my uh, calendar that he had, his makeshift calendar, and I see it's going to be Yom Kippur. Yom Kippur, I'm going to go sing the Ukrainian-Russian songs. I have to travel, use a mic. I can't do it. Musical instruments. But to say I'm not doing it, you can send me back to the front lines. Pikuach nefesh, ish pikuach nefesh. He's struggling. Doesn't know what to do. There comes Yom Kippur. Bronstein, it's time to go. Couldn't get himself to go, he says. <laughs> my voice, my voice. I don't know what happened. Some bacteria, some virus entered my throat. I'm hoarse, I can't sing. <laughs> I'm not the boss of my body. He says, okay, listen, if you're hoarse, you have to protect your voice because we need it. He says, of course, spasiba, spasiba, He gets off. He's in his room, it's him kipper, no siddha, no machzer, no minya, no shul, garnish. But he remembers the tefillas. So he's sitting in his little room over there. And he's singing the Kippur, it's called Nidre, Vinu Malkeinu. As he's in the middle of his Yom Kippur reflection, with a lot of tears in his eyes, no family, no community, dark years of the Second World War, there's a knock on his door. He opens the door, three generals come in, and they say, Bronstein, we know why you didn't go sink today. Your voice is as hoarse as our voice. It's Yom Kippur. Vey, 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 vey. They say, Bronstein. Mir seinen Yiden. We want to hear Kol Nidre. So first, you know, he, he's like, <coughs> Bronstein. We know why you didn't sing. We want Kol Nidre. He says, if I get up here and sing Kol Nidre, and the people hear my voice, you know what's going to happen to me. So why would you do this to me? They said, Bronstein, behind here there's a forest that doesn't end. We'll go deep into the forest. The trees are so tall. Even your Kol Nidre, the trees will hear, but here they won't hear it. Three communist generals decorated a walking Yom Kippur into the depths of a Russian forest. They're walking and walking because they have to be completely remote from civilization. They walked for a long time. The general said, here it's safe. Nobody's going to hear. Start Kol Nidre. Zalman Bronstein, who had a heavenly voice, begins. And in his imagination... 
He's back in his shul with his wife, with his children, with his community, with his rav, with his friends. Singing comedy. says it was a community that he never had there was no fanfare there were no seats there was no chazim, shamish, gabai so it was him Hashem Forrest and three Russian generals that had no connection to Judaism whatsoever but it was so authentic it was so deep so he finished the first Kol Nidre before he was ready to go to the second, he opened his eyes and he took a look and he sees three huge, muscular, powerful, tall, well-built, robust generals sobbing like babies. So he just brought them back to a world that seemingly was gone forever, that world of their youth that they gave up for the Bolshevik paradise of Lenin, Trotsky, and Stalin. He was sobbing. He said, Nachamo. He did Khalidri a second time, a third time. And then they wanted him to go through all the songs of Yom Kippur, which they did in the forest till they came home. And he said every year when he gets up in Shul, Kalmidvez, hundreds of Jews, Talaisim, Kitlach, Gaitlach, beautiful. But he's back in the forest with three generals who have no strings attached to anything. They're not trying to get their kids into seminary, into this school, that school. They're not on Shaduchim lists. They're in a forest, but they're connected. That's where I go to. That's why my Kalmidre sounds the way it sounds. But I thought to myself, you know, isn't this a powerful tool for all of us? Because even when I'm in shul, and there's hundreds of people or dozens of people, but in a certain place, I'm in a forest. I'm in a forest with three little creatures or big creatures inside of me that are often alienated. But at that moment, I could let go of everything. Let go of expectations and let go of disappointments. Let go of particular dreams and ambitions that are making me frustrated because they weren't materialized. And let your soul just go to Yechida Liyachtach, Yechida Shebenefesh, where all the vows, meaning all the promises we make to ourselves, I can't, I can't, I can't, I'm not allowed to. I'm unworthy, I can't be loved, I can't love, I can't be present, I can't have the most incredible relationships with me, with my loved ones, with my children, with my God. All those promises are nullified. Shvikin, shvisin, ptelin, uvatolin, la shereen, The yeshiva.net